Welcome back. I'm Keegan Cooper. The Northern Michigan Wildcat women's soccer team back in action today at home hosting the Davenport Panthers. Now the Wildcats looking to defend at home and they do just that attacking quickly here. It's Molly Pistorius with a breakaway, but the shot saved and it's nil nil. Jump to the 12th minute. Wildcats on the corner. Stephanie Trujillo finds the back of the net from the corner. The corner kick that is and the Wildcats lead one to nothing. Not an easy thing to do. Now this game was delayed due to lightning, but still in the first half here after play resumed. Wildcats attack again. It's Hannah Costomo to Pistorius, and the Wildcats now lead 2-0. Second half action. Wildcats again this time coming up. It's a corner. Brooke Piedela serves, and Costomo is there. The header finds the back of the net. The Wildcats put this one out of reach. 3-0 your final score. Northern Michigan Ten, dominated the nine, day with 24 eight, shots, while seven, Davenport tallied six, only four. Five, Head coach for the catch, John four, Sandoval, spoke on three, how his team dealt two, with the delay. One. Yeah, that was, uh, that was unfortunate. And any time those things happen within a match, it, it can disrupt the rhythm. Uh, and our rhythm at that moment was pretty good. So I was definitely disappointed. But when you have the, the leadership that we do within our locker room, uh, who have been through some of these things before. Again, they've actually been through lightning delays before and they know what it's like and they know the process. So they keep the team engaged and keep them mentally prepared for it. Well, the Wildcats are now 7-1-2. and two. Their next match sees them head to Houghton to face off against the Michigan Tech Huskies on Friday, October 6th. Game time set for 7 p.m. Well, speaking of the Huskies, also on the pitch today, Michigan Tech hosting the Grand Valley State Lakers in a defensive battle early on in this match as this shot from Cassie Boniface trying to set up a goal for the Huskies gets blocked and the game would move on from there. Now after a miss cross the first time the Lakers get a corner kick and an opportunity here. Mackenzie Jones's header is able to find the back of the net and the Lakers would go up one to nothing. Now Lakers add one more goal in the second half and they would leave the UP with a two nothing win. Michigan Tech's head coach Bullet Ozturk spoke on the loss and the upcoming matchup against Northern Michigan. Congratulations to them. Um, uh, they deserve the, the win today, and uh, you know we, we look to um, bounce back hopefully uh, next week now against Northern Michigan. But overall, I thought our girls worked extremely hard. Um, there were very good moments of how well we kept the ball, and moved the ball. There were very good moments of how hard we um, were defensively and organized, and then there were very good moments of how well we pressed as well. Well, the Huskies look to rebound against Northern Michigan again that game Friday, October 6th. Game time starts at 7 p.m. A night game should be interesting for some soccer. And in men's college soccer, the Wildcats on the road against St. Cloud State. They fall 2-0. The Cats drop to 2-7-1 on the year. Moving to some high school football action. Week 6 is in the books, and it's time for your top plays of the week. It's the boys in red who start off this week's list. That's right, Marquette in at number 5. Escanaba had a chance to get points before the half here. However, Nolan Bink picked off by Drew Bradley, and he returns it all the way down to the Eskimo 10-yard line. Nearly a disaster, but what a pick and some extra yards gained on that play. Top play number four goes to Gladstone, fourth and seven for the Braves. Nate Young connects over the middle to Elliott Vitito, and the Braves strike here. He gets into the end zone. Top play number three, we go back to Escanaba here coming up. They take spot number three, fourth and 22 from the 27. Escanaba converts and they score on a wide open pass to Alex Stahlberger. What a conversion there on fourth down and long. Top play number two, Kingsford. And who other than Eli Rouse? On the first snap of the third quarter, he takes this ball 56 yards to the house, gets around the defenders, and he's into the end zone. But your top spot of the week goes to the Nagani Miners. The first play from scrimmage in the third quarter. Kyla Carr breaks free, one man to beat, and he does it. He's gone. That's 78 yards, a touchdown score, and the Nagani Miners take your top play of the week for week six of high school football. 